I'll turn it over to Rich. He can fill you in now. We're going to have Tom come up afterwards to answer any questions also. I want to go back to your question about the crisis. Is there a crisis? For them, no. For us, yes. Okay? For us, because the way the system is set up right now, the school board can increase our taxes at will to replenish this money. So is there a crisis for the taxpayer? The answer is yes. Okay? Before I go into the presentation, Tom was talking about reports. This particular report here, let me go back. When did this pension crisis start? Anybody want to guess? Okay. This report is an Auditor General report from 2006. Jack Wagner did this report. 323 pages. You see all them little blue tags? That is all the instructions that the PSEA and the SERS did not follow. In other words, they left the pensions exactly as they were in 2006 and actually made them worse. This is the Auditor General's report. I have, this one is on the PSEA. I also have one on the SERS. And it's just as bad. Okay? The, this particular report, which was done by Jack Wagner, was given to Governor Rendell and also a list of the other people involved in this. And I'm not going to go over their names. But Jack Wagner said, this is the problem with the pensions. So the governor had it. The appointees by the governor had it. The board members had it. The Auditor General had it. The General Assembly did not get it. This was kept secret. Because they'd have to do something. All them blue tabs are problems. And if this was given out, and I, I want to go back, I want to thank Tom for standing up for this. Because once he started seeing the problems, he's the one that kept calling me and I kept calling him. I've taken this information to other legislators that, oh, there's no big problem. Isn't there? There is a problem. It's a major problem. Who's Jack Wagner? Jack Wagner was the Auditor General back under uh, Rendell. He's the one who exposed the pension problems. He's the one that exposed the welfare fraud. He's the one that exposed the corruption in the interest swaps. And all the reports are put down here. They didn't know about it. What happens in Harrisburg, and I've mentioned this several times before, Leadership gets the information and leadership passes down what they want the legislators to know. Tom, you found out about this this year. This has been going on prior to 19 or 2006. And the only reason he found out about it is because I kept hounding him. Okay? Now let's go into the pensions a little bit. Pension fund most risky in the United States. Think about that. The SERS is the most risky pension fund in the United States. Would you put your pension money in something that's ultra high risk? No. Uh, Pennsylvania leads the nation in the total portion of alternative investments. I think it's the next one, John. I got that right? Yep, there we go. 
alternative private equity hedge funds, real estate, and other illiquid investments managed by high fee private money managers. Private. We're going to touch on that. Some of whom are contributors to Governor Rendell and other politicians who control the funds. They're also tied to the leadership in both parties. The SCRS and Washington State are the two state pensions with the largest allocation into private equity. There's basically three major problems in these investments. Hedge funds. I'm not going to read the whole thing here, but the definition of hedge funds is up here. All the documentation to verify what I'm going over is playing up here. Please take a copy with you. If there's extra, take some to friends. And if you think this is important, I recommend that you take this to your legislator and ask them why they're not confronting this and get them on Tom Cotter's own side to fix this. We need to put pressure on everybody else. Hedge funds is ultra high risk. Hedge funds have no security exchange regulations. They don't have to answer to anybody. I'll give you a quick example of a hedge fund. <clears throat> With investments, these investment bankers put investments together. Prior to the federal government going into high-risk mortgages, they would put package mortgages together. Okay? We'd sell them to Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. Freddie Mac would then get investment bankers to put packages together to resell them as government-secured mortgages. They can't put the high-risk mortgages in them packages. But Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac has so many of them that they need more money. So what do the hedge fund companies do? They're starting to put the high risk mortgages into hedge funds with no oversight. Hedge funds cannot be sold to you as an individual. It can be, they can only be sold to institutes or really high profile investors like Warren Buffett. No oversight whatsoever. Well, in that sort, didn't we bail out Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac? Didn't we bail out the investment bankers? Them exact same investments are going into these state pension funds and they're not going to perform. One of the biggest complaints by not only Auditor Jack Wagner, but also the, the new Auditor General, De Pasquale, is that the trustees are supposed to follow what they call the prudent man law based on common sense investing, which is not high risk. They're not doing that. Auditor General, well, this is the one that uh, Tom was talking about, Anthony Clark. He's the one that opened up uh, a lot of the hedge funds into the pensions uh, with the state. He had a particular friend who was a member and owned Tiger Investments, and they put $250 million in that one. <coughs> Next one, John. Okay. Actually, what happened was he fell under uh, some investigation because, on a very short term, uh, the Tiger Investments lost $17 million within a 12-month period. He was questioned. Well, they left it go on. But he also did not disclose that not only did they lose $17 million, they also pay Tiger Investments $11 million to administer that money. So $28 million is a whoop up in smoke. It's gone. 
this kind of investing should not happen. But he was exonerated from any problems, but he was also the one that Tom mentioned was playing on the computer doing his own trades, working three days a week. Another high risk is what they call venture capital. I got mine out of sync here. But venture capital is nothing more than another high risk. Venture capital is designed solely for new startup companies. Guess what kind of regulations is on by the federal government? None. Now, I want to bring up another subject here. We have these pensions with the majority is in high risk, or if it was your money, would you rather have it in that high risk or a 401k plan that is not allowed to have this high risk? Where would you want your money? 401k. And the fees are going to be a lot less also. Private equity. Private equity is nothing more than investments in private companies, new startup companies. Ever heard of Solyndra? Yeah. Okay, that's private companies. And when they go bankrupt, guess what happens to your money? Yeah. Poof, it's gone. What's the difference between venture capital and private equity? Venture capital and private equities. Venture capital can be in new startup companies. Okay? Private is personal loans. It's private money that is to help a startup company. Okay? But it's like personal loans. And, huh? Not stocks. Okay? Venture capital, hedge funds, um, and private equity, none of them are stocks like you would see on a mutual fund, like in a mutual fund. Mutual funds must be regulated by the SEC. There's guidelines that they have to follow. Hedge funds, venture capital, private equities, there is none. A private equity could be this. You give me $250,000 to invest. So I say, oh, okay. Bill comes to me and says, well, I need $150,000 to start a bigger constitutional class. I say, okay, here you go. <laughs> that would be a valid expenditure, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, if it fails, what happens to the money? They won't fail. Okay. And the thing is, they don't have legal boundaries to go back after. That's part of the problem with private equities. Touch on this with, uh, you ever heard about Enron? You know all their problems? Everybody lost all their money, right? Wrong. Enron was on the stock exchange. If you bought Enron stock, you had to buy it through a broker. The broker had insurance to protect you against fraud and theft. Enron was fraud and theft. Anybody that had up to a half a million dollars got their money back. Anybody that had invested more than a half a million lost above the half a million. But that wasn't in the paper, was it? Okay, we're on this one. Uh, back to what Tom had mentioned earlier, in 2000, all the pensions funds were solid. They had enough assets, they had enough money. Everything was working. And from 2007 till now, they only have 60 cents for every dollar that they owe. From 2007 to today, 2007 they were liquid, today they have 60 cents for every dollar that they owe out. And when did they up the rate? Which rate? On, on the pension plan, how the payout was, what year did they do that? Uh, that was actually in 2002, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm right Yeah, 2002. Okay. So there you go. But everything was working until then. And it actually worked from 2002 through 2007. So what happened in 2007 and 8 to cause the problem? <clears throat> Hedge fund business is a great deal. Somebody wanted to know earlier about the fees. Hedge funds get what they call 2 and 20. 2% 2 fee every year on the value of the assets 
and they keep 20% of the profits. There you go. That's why they do it. Okay. 2% management fee on the value of the account. And the investors keep 20% of the profit. Okay? That's what the managers get. Now, this is the reason that a lot of these reports are bogus. The PSEA just stated, I have a copy of the article here, that is it. We made 15% last year. Oh, yeah? What does your financial report say? The financial report says they made two. And that's because of all the additional fees that's coming out of this stuff. Huh? Yeah. Right. Right. You're right. And that's and that's basically the reason we're not making money. We're going to go into a graph right from uh, their website. Go to the next one. Um, Philoff Inquiry noted that it's hard to know how much money SER has paid since some of the SER hedge fund fees aren't included in the agency's annual report. No regulations. Okay. Pennsylvania has been one of the most aggressive states in these bad investments. Tom had talked about the 46 percent, uh, and actually at one time there was over 400 private investors hired for the PSEA. Now, I want to mention this also because Tom had brought this up earlier. Actually, from 1980 through 1989, the uh, SERS went from three money managers uh, up to 47. Their average rate of return during that period of years after expenses was 13.5%. That's not bad. Uh, 1990, they, it was 53. By 1999, there was 116 managers. Guess what happened to the rate of return? It went down. Now, this report was actually through 2005, um, because this was out of one of the older reports. Well, they were up to 167. What's interesting about this in the report the annual rate of return, according to what they printed in their report, was 15.1%. If you look at what they made from one year to the other, what well, was the actual increase in the investment? It was 8%. Why? Hidden fees. Go to the next one, Tom. Uh, Pennsylvania's two big pension funds, tens of billions of dollars are being lost. See, one of the things I disagree with with what we hear, this problem is not your fault. Your taxes should not be increased every year to pay for this loss. You had nothing to do with that. But by the same token, the teachers and I'm not talking about the unions. I'm talking about the teachers. They paid in every year. They didn't cause this either, did they? No. Here's where your biggest loss is, and I'm going to get into some numbers. Go to the next one. Uh, again, 46%, 400 companies. Go to the next one. Okay. The system paid about $1.35 billion in management fees in the last five years and reported a return of annualized rate of return of 3.6%. I want you to remember that 3.6% when we go to their actual chart of what's in the accounts. 
a uh, five-year period and not a long enough period of time. 3.9 billion. Uh, go to the next one. That's, we pretty much covered that. Uh, De Pasquale, again, they need to minimize these high-risk invest investments. Next one, John. In hedge funds alone, the state has, uh, what is that, 6.7 billion? 5.7 billion, 1.9 billion? or 19% in high-risk investments in just the hedge funds. Just the hedge funds. Hedge funds, according to De Pasquale, there's his analysis, no regulation by the U.S. Security Exchange Commission. They can basically do what they want. Now, I want to just flip through this. This is the Public School Employees Retirement System roster of investments. Go ahead, John. Go again. Go again. Go again. Go again. And again. And again. And again. And again. Keep going. This is the list of who they hired to handle this money. Go ahead. Go ahead. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going, keep going. Any more? Any more? Any more? 213 high risk, is, high risk investments is in the PSERS. This information came right from their report. When they start taking that much money out, go to the next one. I think it's the next one. Yep. This is the 2013 report for the SERS. They paid out 4.7 million in fees. Yeah, 4.7 million. Would have that money been better off in the pension so we wouldn't have our taxes raised? Yes. Merle Lynch, $865,000. Now, I'm in this field. That 865 million, if they gave me the money to handle that 860, or that commission, or the money that they're handling, you know what I would charge them to handle it? Nothing. Reason? The company I would invest with would pay me out of their profits to handle it. None of my clients get charged a penny for me. Because my agreement with the company is they pay me out of their profits. My people don't pay. So all of this money could be saved. Go to the next one. Uh, 9.2 million as of June of 2013. It's a year cycle with the teachers union. 1.278 million dollars paid to Goldman Sachs. You know what I find interesting? You look at these names, Goldman Sachs, UBS, uh, Merrill Lynch, Morgan Stanley. Guess who's also handling all the interest swaps in the state? It's the exact same companies. This all started after 2000 using these companies. Interest swaps. You f aren't you familiar with what happened up at Hamburg? Oh, yeah, they, they uh, took the debt and reshuffled the debt around, and it cost the, uh, the homeowners up there $4.4 million. Uh, Daniel Boone, it cost them $6.9 million. The school boards are allowed to move the debt to where they want, right? 76 would stop this, by the way. And that's one of the reasons that most people don't want this passed. But they, they negotiate, the investment bankers come in and say, well, you know, you have this rate here, maybe you ought to take this rate over here. Now, if you take a long-term debt, there's prepayment penalties. 
the schools will sign agreements for 10 years. If they cancel that in five years, they still have to pay the interest that's due. And then companies like Merrill Lynch and Goldman Sachs charge a million bucks to do the deal. And the interest swaps in the state of Pennsylvania since 2003 when it was approved to do. Prior to that, they couldn't do this. But up till now, it cost us, the taxpayers, of over $20 billion in our school taxes that we should not have been charged. This is a, a break up. Huh? Oh, I know how it's played. We, the taxpayers, are supposed to go, thank you. <laughs>